Hi, I'm Michael Sinoff, founder and CEO of HardToFindSeminars.com. For the last five years, I've interviewed the world's best business and marketing minds. Now my challenge is to build the world's largest free resource for online, downloadable audio business interviews. I've learned a lot in the last five years, and today I'm going to show you the skills you need to survive. I went to a book called The Red Book, The Standard Directory of Advertising Agencies. Since I was the advertising manager of an industrial company, I sent a one-page sales letter to 500 creative directors at 500 different advertising agencies who, in the Red Book, indicated that they had one or more industrial-type accounts, and that's how I started. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with Michael Sinoff's HardToFindSeminars.com. Here is a two-hour interview with master copywriter Bob Bly. I grilled Bob with questions from my HardToFindSeminars.com subscribers on the inside secrets of the copywriting business. Bob Bly is an independent copywriter and consultant with more than 25 years' experience in business-to-business, high-tech, industrial, and direct marketing. McGraw-Hill calls Bob Bly America's top copywriter. He is the author of what many consider to be the Bible of copywriting, the Copywriter's Handbook. The legendary David Ogilvy says, I don't know a single copywriter whose work would not be improved by reading this book, and that includes me. Bob Bly writes sales letters, direct mail packages, magalogs, email marketing, ads, brochures, articles, press releases, web pages, white papers, catalogs, and other marketing materials clients need to sell their products and services to businesses and direct response buyers. Most copywriters out there today have, at best, only a few years of experience and are not yet masters of their craft. Bob has been writing winning promotions for top clients like Boardroom, IBM, Intuit, Ken Roberts Company, Swiss Bank, Nortel Networks, Paxar, and dozens of other companies for over a quarter of a century. Yes, there are a few other senior copywriters you can hire today, but but Bob does something many of them do not. He writes all of his own copy. He doesn't hire junior copywriters to work on your promotions. If he takes on your job, you know that every word in your promotion was written by Bob Bly, an advantage not available from any other source. This may be your only chance to get answers from one of the best copywriters around. So hang on and get ready and let's get going. Bob Bly speaking. Good morning, Bob. It's Mike Sinoff. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? Good. You have a good weekend? I did. So we're going to be answering exactly what the marketers and the copywriters want to know. Bob, the first question is from John Rustoldi in Norway, and he wants to know, how did you set up your copywriting business in the early days, and how did you get your first assignments? Did you do any spec work to get testimonials? And this was one of the most common questions that I got from people, and I think it goes back to the fear that copywriters don't have credibility and they believe they need testimonials from others to prove their credibility. How would you answer that? Well, I wasn't smart enough to think that way. So when I started, I had no testimonials. I had worked in corporate America, in the corporate world, in junior level advertising manager type positions for a couple of years for two different companies. So when I went into copywriting, I still had a job. Were these newsletter publishers? No, not at all. The first one was Westinghouse Electronics and Aerospace. My division made radars, like you go to the airport and you see a radar. That's what we made. And the second company was an engineering firm that made equipment for chemical plants. So what were you doing in relation to advertising with them? Well, all those types of companies have to advertise. And I was managing their advertising program. It's a job at the engineering firm. For example, we would run ads in trade journals and we had an ad agency who created those ads and I managed their work and this was in the early 80s when an engineer would respond to one of those ads they'd want some technical sales literature so I would actually write it and I'd have it hire a designer to design it and then we print it and mail it out we also did a lot of marketing and trade shows so we had to create exhibits and set those up at various trade shows so I still had that job and what I did is I was real simple minded about it I went to a book called the red book the standard directory of advertising agencies. Since I was the advertising manager of an industrial company, I sent a one-page sales letter to 
500 creative directors at 500 different advertising agencies who in the Red Book indicated that they had one or more industrial type accounts, and that's how I started. What did your offer basically say? The letter is reprinted in full in my book, Secrets of a Freelance Writer, but the headline was, How an Engineer and Ad Manager Can Help You Write Better Ads and Brochures. And the letter basically said, I'm a freelance copywriter specializing in industrial advertising, and I will write your ads or brochures or whatever else you need, and if you'd like to get a copywriting information kit, more information about my services, and some samples of my work, and again, this is before the web, so you couldn't send them to a website, just mail back the enclosed reply card, and I'll send it to you. That was the offer. Were you a student of advertising at that time? Were you studying Caples or Eugene Schwartz or any of these guys? I started out being more a student of writing. I was interested in writing per se. At that time, which was, I guess, 1980-81, what happened is when I got this job at the engineering firm, the first day I was there, my boss walked in and he said, I get some marketing magazines. I don't read them. Here they are. If you want to read them, if not, throw them out. And it was direct marketing in there. And prior to that, I had not been exposed to Cables, Ogilvy, and the direct marketing mindset. I came from a technical background. I'm a chemical engineer by training. I worked for technical companies. We didn't practice any of these principles. I'm sure my bosses were unaware of all of these things, but then I read articles in direct marketing that were written by some of the then top copywriters and agency people and direct marketers, and then I got very interested and began to get my hand on everything I could find. This was at the time in New York City, and this was before for Amazon, so I went to the Strand Bookstore and all the old bookstores in New York City, and I would hunt up these books, and on a Saturday, that was my great excitement. I'd be banging around these bargain bins. I still have it today. I found an original hardcover of Claude Hopkins' Scientific Advertising. Oh, wow. For a dollar. Now you can download it free on the internet, but then it was such a treasure. Yeah. Like everyone listening to this program, I would read and study it. It was like a kid in the candy store. When I found one of those, I immediately went out and bought Ogilvy on Advertising, Confessions of an Advertising Man. Back then, Prentice Hall had in print the original Caples books. I bought and read all the Caples books, so I was getting very much into it. And my interest was shifting from pure writing, which was always an interest, to direct marketing and advertising. So I would answer yes, but I was a beginning student. So what happened? I'm sure you remember you mailed out 500 letters. I, mean, I remember exactly. I mailed out 500, and within four or five weeks, I had 35 people respond, which was a 7% response, and I was on my way. You know, I had 35 people who were interested in learning to some degree about my copywriting services, and I began to respond to those as best I could in my limited time since I was already employed, and they began to become clients. So how was your confidence level at that time as a writer, and compare that to with what you would charge then and then now? I mean, did you have the confidence to charge a hefty fee back then? No. My strategy, which was probably a huge mistake in retrospect, I charged a very low fee. My logic was, I'm a beginner, so I will charge low fees to get the business. I was was not as sophisticated as many of the people listening to this today who would say, hey, you charge a low fee, people perceive you as a low value. I thought, what's going to work? A low price. So I charged very little money. It's not that I wasn't confident. I thought I could because I was going after mainly industrial accounts. I knew how to write industrial copy. And I was confident I could do the work. Yeah, so when you worked it out per hour, you had your time and you had one fee. You weren't making anything on the back end on these accounts. None of these accounts paid anything on the back end. So what I I would say is that I didn't really calculate the hour, but to give you an idea, my last full year of employment was 1981, and back then I was earning, I think, 27 or 28 or $29,000 a year, which was not a bad salary then. It's not a lot, but I was a couple of years out of school and in my early 20s. And my first year of full-time freelancing, which was 82, in which I actually worked 10 months because I started at the end of February, I grossed $39,000 a year. Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with HardToFindSeminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard-hitting, mind-blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere 
anywhere on the internet or on the planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word-for-word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse some more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.